Hello everyone, I've been using the X-Plane platform for about 8 years now and my goal is to get you, the new user, up to speed on some cool tips and tricks within X-Plane 12. And even if you've been using X-Plane for a while, you might learn at least one little thing. So stay with me and let's learn about X-Plane. Now if you're using X-Plane for the first time, a good place to start will be the control setup, because we can't fly these planes without controls after all, and if you don't have any flights and peripherals yet, I have a tutorial that'll help you set up for flight with a mouse and keyboard. We all gotta start somewhere, and if you really want to do this, you'll do whatever it takes. At least until you can invest in maybe a joystick or one of the yokes out there. But to accomplish this, we're going to click Settings and click on Joystick, and most of the time, there should be an image of the controller you're using, and you just go down the line making sure everything is mapped. Generally, most of the mappings should already be set up, but it's never quite perfect, so we need to verify that these are correct. At a base level, make sure your throttle, your ailerons, pitch are all mapped and moving in the correct direction. If they're not moving right, there is a reverse axis box you can check, and that will get the axis moving in the opposite direction than what it's moving in. Uh, what you need to be careful about is any dual mapping. This, this can happen across the same controller or multiple controllers. For example, if you have the throttle axis mapped on your joystick and also a quadrant, it might test okay in the settings, but once you get into the aircraft, it's going to cancel out that control altogether and it won't let you move it. So if there are any controls that won't budge, a dual mapping somewhere is usually the culprit. Remove the one that you don't want and then it should work. You can also program buttons from this page and the really nice thing is that upon pressing the button on your hardware, you will be taken to the exact spot you are pushing within the control list. It also lights up to confirm that this is in fact the button you are pushing and you want to map. For the keyboard, you can take a look at the Essentials tab, and this will show you some of the default keys that you may want to use. I sometimes still use a combination of joystick and keyboard commands for landing gear, uh, arming spoilers, so take a brief glance at that just to see if there's anything that they've mapped that you would like to use. The general settings page, I normally do not find anything here that I need to turn on or off. You can select different languages, and there are a few helpful things you may want to turn on that relate to learning. So again, take a look and see if any of these sound like something you would want turned on. You can also hover the mouse over each one, and there is a brief description about what it does. Sound settings I've never really had to mess around with too much. I keep the radio down just in case the default ATC wants to talk to me, because I like using uh, networks like the VAT SIM network for ATC, but feel free to adjust any of them if they're not to your liking. The graphic settings, now these will always be subjective based on your hardware. I'm using an overclocked 3080 Ti and an Intel 10700K at the moment. Generally, max settings aren't a good idea. I mean, you can move everything up there and load in a flight and see what you're getting and then start working your way back until you have stable performance. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a sim that I would sacrifice graphics on for frames per second just because you're going to feel the planes all the much better. And that, at the end of the day, is what most of us are trying to do. But with my system, this is what I pretty much run. If I'm using VR, I have to bring these down quite a bit. But for monitor play with Track IR, these are the settings that work for me. Watch out with the render resolution. Uh, keeping this one low will blur your instrument panels a little bit because it ends up running the sim at a smaller resolution and then upscaling it to your native. So if you can, I'd run that at ultra or to full. But if you need the performance gain, you can try running that lower. If you would like to see windshield effects like rain and bird strikes, you can tick this box. Another is the draw parked aircraft box, and this will put planes all around the airport. They are real company liveries, but they aren't always placed exactly where they should be. It's kind of more random with the companies that use this. I did do a flight into Raleigh recently, and it did have the Southwest gate populated with only Southwest planes, so I think it does have, you know, know um, a little bit where to put them, but it's not always perfect. And then below that, we have a box that turns the 3D vegetation on or off. And this page does scroll, and towards the bottom, we have some view settings. And these control the field of view in the flight deck. I usually dial it back a little bit. If you think your view is always loading in too close to the panel, you can come in here and widen all that out. If you would like to run VR, as I said before, you will most likely need to run lower graphic settings from what you use on your monitor. But you won't know until you're in VR to environment to try it so make sure your headset is plugged in and ready then click the enable VR hardware box and you will enter the interface for that. Now for the most exciting part your first flight. Go ahead and click on new flight and I want to show you some cool things you can do that might not become apparent to you right away without someone pointing them out. 
The first thing I want to draw your attention to is special starts. Now it doesn't matter what airport you have selected, you can select anything. Just make sure you have the aircraft selected that you would like to try, then go up to the custom button, and then on the bottom left you will see special starts, and this will bring up a few scenarios that might interest you. Various strip starts, landing carrier launch starts, oil rig landings. If you just want something quick to do, you can go there. But generally, you'll be starting from a particular airport. So we can type in the airport we want by the name or code, and again, come over to Customize, and from here we can choose from a list or on the map where we would like to start. You can pick parking spots or runways. You can also launch your flight on approach. You can select the runway, and then go over to this drop-down menu here, and it'll give you a choice between a 3 or a 10 nautical mile approach to the runway. Once that's all confirmed, if you haven't already, you can select your aircraft. You may notice a little box here that says show aircraft from older versions of X-Plane, and this will give you a few more aircraft to pick from. And when you have an aircraft selected, the livery choices will be in this upper right drop-down, and the weight and balance can be managed with the button on the bottom left. Sometimes the aircraft that you pay for, they want you to manage the weight and balance within the developer's own interface for that. So meaning the one I'm showing you here, it may not translate to that those types of aircraft. But for anything default, this should be fine because it was designed to work with these planes first and foremost. The button next to that is failures, and this is one of the features where X-Plane really shines. You have all kinds of aircraft and environmental failures you can practice. Each one has a drop-down menu and you can toggle the failure to be active via hotkey at certain altitudes, speeds, times, or you can have them failed already. But tons of stuff in here you can practice with. Top right allows you to inject AI and these will appear around you at airports or in the air. You can also enable combat here and which aircraft will be friendly or foe. Next we have the time of day settings, pretty self-explanatory, X-Plane does have seasons and these are triggered by month so you can either customize all that or just track the current time and date in the, of the real world. Lastly is the weather settings, on the surface it has 9 presets that will form some of those most common weather situations you might encounter. But if you want to go further, you can click Customize, and all the way at the bottom, this was where it would allow you to choose if you would like to download the real weather or customize it yourself. A good place to start if you want to see some of the rain effects. You can come in here, adjust the cloud layers, add some precipitation, and you can control runway conditions. You can control the wind, the temperature, everything you would need, including thermals. I don't want that to go overlooked. It's at the bottom of the list if you scroll down. So after you visited all these areas, the sky is yours, you are ready to hit the start flight button. Once you've loaded into the flight deck of your choosing, go ahead and verify your core flight sim controls are working and the way you intended. By default, to look around, you press and hold the right mouse button and then look around that way by moving the mouse and holding it. Position the camera up and down, left, right is accomplished by the arrow keys. And if you would like to move further back in the seat, uh, you can turn the mouse to the right or left, let go of the mouse button, and then you can use the arrow keys, the left or right ones, to move forward and back in the seat. You can also zoom in and out with the mouse scroll wheel. And again, if you don't like how zoomed in it is, you can adjust your field of view settings, as I mentioned earlier. Now let's assume you've completed your flight and you would like to take a look at your landing or takeoff. X-Plane is always recording a track of your flight that you can go back to and review by hitting shift P. But first, just in case, I usually go up to file and I do save replay. And you don't have to do this, I just do it just in case the sim was to crash. I haven't lost the replay altogether. Also, just know once a new version of these aircraft come out, sometimes your old replay file for that particular plane won't work anymore. But anyways, as I was saying, you hit shift P and this will bring up a timeline and it allows you to go back anywhere in the flight. And for added fun, you can come up to view, and there are several different ways you can view the aircraft externally. You can also go to a free cam and move it wherever you would like to, but it's got tower view, chase view, and all of those. So not only can you save and rewatch flights, X-Plane has a built-in recorder. Now, if you have a potato PC, this will allow you to capture extremely smooth footage from your replay. Granted, the worse your PC is, the longer it's going to take. It's going to look like it's playing back in really slow motion, but it's actually rendering the video for a really smooth final product. And if you have a good PC, the rendering will move pretty much at normal flight speed. It just really depends on how complex the, the scenery is. The only downside is that it doesn't capture the audio, so you'll have to make sure you have a copy of the audio track, and then you can dub it in in your, 
in your editing software, which sometimes is easier said than done because your audio track is probably going to be a different bit rate. So it it's, can be a challenge keeping them synced up. But most of the time it should all work out. So just remember, if you want to make content but your FPS is bad, uh, this is one way to capture and view your flights in 60 frames per second. And there are several settings for this also located where it says configure video recording and this allows you to toggle the quality of the render. Now these renders will be outputted to the X-Plane 12 folder. The easiest way to locate the root folder is to right click on the X-Plane 12 icon, go to properties, and then click file location. And once you locate it, I recommend bookmarking it because you'll probably be coming back to it quite a bit. But your recordings will be housed under screenshots. Also keep in mind that these videos can be recorded for as long as you want, but they are broken up by about every 30 to 40 seconds. Next, I want to briefly cover some really cool add-ons I recommend, many of which are free, but before that, you need to know how to install them. So I want to bring us back to the root X-Plane 12 folder. If you're coming from X-Plane 11, nothing really has changed. Most payware comes with an installer that knows where to put everything, but a lot of the free stuff you will have to manually place. But it's very easy. Aircraft is where the installed planes you have will live. If you wanted to add a livery, you, you downloaded each aircraft has a livery folder, and you just paste the, that livery folder within, within the aircraft's livery folder. Same with the scenery. If there isn't an installer, it will be pasted into the custom scenery folder. Custom data is where you can update the overall navigation data. Uh, this is not a free service, though. You need Navigraph um, for every sim that requires this. Um, and any plugins that you use will go under Resources and then Plugins. And you just paste the folder there, and then it should begin showing up in X-Plane upon the next launch. Managed up by the Plugins button, where you can usually toggle it on and off or, or manage the settings within that plugin. The xplane.org forum is probably the best website around for xplane mods. Tons of great liveries and all kinds of goodies for xplane. Flysim.2 is also growing in popularity for free mods. Pushback Express is a free and must have plugin. It's probably the easiest pushback tool in all of Flysim to date. Very good one to have. X Camera is my go to camera plugin for xplane. It does cost a few dollars, but it does add a lot more functionality to the camera system, allowing you to adjust camera speed, save presets, and, and just tons of more options for the camera. Next is the legendary Zebo Mod 737. This, in my opinion, is the best 737 for flight simulation. It's completely free. Please do not waste a second on the default 737. This one's a must-have. It doesn't replace that the default. It just creates its own 737 within the menu, so you got to check this one out. Tolis Flight Factor, uh, they both make A320s, expect some very cool stuff out of them, but that's where you go for any uh, A320 experience you would like to have on X-Plane. Next is the Airfoil Lab Cesta 172. This is my favorite G1000 172. They, both, they do both the Steam Gauge and the G1000. No one else does it like this. It allows you to fully study the 172 inside and out. Ortho is the main way to update the scenery to make it look true to life. When you see someone flying an X-Plane in it, it looks really good outside the window. This is what they're using. I get my Ortho from X-Plane 11's Orbex True Earth. When using X-Plane, I usually just stick to the west coast of North America, so this has been good enough for me, and I really like it. But Ortho is the way to go. Lastly, I want to bring up Prop Strike Studio Scenery. They offer an outstanding free and payware scenery for backcountry flying. you got to check that out. And there are many more great add-ons for X-Plane 12, but we would be here all day. Um, I tried to cover just ones that stuck out to me over the years. But please feel free to comment with your favorite add-ons. We can just build a list. Um, there's just there's so much good stuff. So this is going to conclude the video. I hope I was able to bring you up to speed very quick in the delights of X-Plane 12. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment them below. Myself or the community members will try to help you. But I, um, I'm always around reading comments, and there's so much to build onto for this video, so we can we can do it there. All right, so long, everybody. See you next time.